Hi guys, welcome back to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble, and today we're going to be going over zones in KiCad 5.0 and how they've changed a little bit. Uh, these actually haven't changed too much if you were using the OpenGL Canvas, which is uh, something I've made a video about in the past. Basically, KiCad has transitioned from an older, uh, older I think it's a Cairo or a Gal, or I don't remember the names of them, but basically there's different types of ways that you can draw the layout on your screen. The actual software that's drawing the layout on your screen and rendering graphics, all that stuff, that has changed over time. And that's honestly what uh, the biggest thing that has changed from KiCad 4.0 to 5.0 in terms of the, the default the defaults going on. In 5.1, this is actually going to there's going to be a default change in the schematic drawing as well. We'll get to all that. So, today we're going to actually look at how planes have changed in uh, the OpenGL canvas and how uh, and I talked a little bit about this in the via stitching video that I did last. Uh, so, let's take a look at a layout that we have here. So, you see there's a bunch of components and there's a whole lot of traces going on here. Uh, what we're going to do is actually I'm going to turn off the inner two layers. Make that a little bit simpler. You see that there's actually there is an outline for a plane here. It's kind of hard to see in red on black, but there is also a plane on the outside here, and the edge cut layer is not showing, but it definitely is rendering. So not sure about that. What we're going to see though is we're going to look at this component here. You see that there's it's got a bunch of weird pins. This is actually a, a headphone jack, and you see that R2 is ground, and we're going to be looking at the green ground plane. I'm going to turn off the top layer as well, and so we hit B to draw. And what we do is we see that the the ground plane has drawn anywhere that there's a, a component or a pin that is not actually connected to the ground plane. It can, it's going to cut out around there. This is all default behavior. And what we're going to do is take a quick look at the uh, the properties of this one. You see that on the back side there's a ground plane uh, and that it has, I, I set things to solid instead of a thermal relief. You can see thermal relief is a pretty standard one. There's my clearances and minimums and all that other stuff and this is something that we go through in other videos. But what I want to show today uh, uh, is actually on the red side of things because that has a, you see that here this is just a square, this is a square shape and then the outline of the board actually defined this weird curvature here. What I'm going to show is actually a, a much more uh, a custom shape here, and this is actually on the top side. This is a uh, this is the top side copper here, and actually let's put in the footprints as well. Oh, there's the outline. Okay, so it's a, actually I, I created the outline on the top side uh, as a footprint, so that's why it wasn't showing. Uh, okay, so what you see though is the top side is the red copper drawing here. And in the red copper drawing, we can actually grab this and look at what the shape is. It's this very complex shape. It's not a square. And what, what I wanted to show here is that we can manipulate this much, much easier. And this is something that's changed and much, much for the better. So what I'm going to do is just grab and click and drag this around. Now, obviously, this is going to start throwing some errors because I'm doing some weirdness with, with planes here. But the ability to, to, to modify a plane like this is really, really important. So you see that there's square, there's square uh, markers here. That actually is a corner. And then there's circular markers, and that actually is for the entire the midpoint of the line. So if we want to grab and draw this, drag this line around, now we can do that. You see that it's kind of jumping around. That's because my grid is too big. So I'm going to make the grid a little bit smaller, or really small. And this should give us lots and lots of resolution here for moving this around. And you see, I can basically move this around as I need. Now, if I wanted to make a different, say I don't want to have a triangular corner on the outside here, I can right click and then I can say create corner. And now you see there's another square here and then another center point as well. And this is really useful for making a smoother uh, corner as well. And you may notice that uh, this has a very complex shape that I'm showing here. I didn't actually cl click and create corners like this. They actually, this actually was an imported, uh, this is an imported shape. And I have another video about how to turn a footprint into a zone uh, in another video. But you can see that we very easily could have, if we want to, we could have basically traced this and, and made a very complex shape on our own by creating more corners. Now, if you also want to make it a simpler shape, you can right click and say remove corner. And that basically makes things a little bit simpler here. And that's good too when, if you're drawing a square shape. So let me just do that real quick here. So if I'm drawing a square shape on the top side, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. I'm on the wrong layer here. So you need to be on a, a copper layer in order to do that. So now I'm going to draw a shape. I'm going to say on the top side, I'm going to draw a ground plane, right? You see all of the, everything else is just standard here. So now if I'm going to, you can see as I'm drawing this shape here, it's just like drawing a, a net almost. It, it's limiting to 45 degree angles. I feel like I shouldn't have, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't have done a uh, red here. But if I just double click to finish, you see now that I've created other corners. And what I can do is then right click uh, over top of the corner and then say remove corner. So I click to select the corner, right click, remove corner, 
and then basically we can make it a square again. Now, one thing I like doing is actually, even though I turned the grid down before, I actually like to have the, whenever I'm drawing uh, square ground planes or, or planes in general, I like to have it nice and uh, a, a large grid because then it guarantees that I will be square. It basically snaps to that square corner here and then now it's guaranteed to be square without much hassle. So whenever I'm drawing square planes, I make sure that it's on a larger grid. So like I said, uh, we can draw lots and lots of planes here. Uh, if you wanted to, like I said, uh, or like I showed with by accident here, if you wanted to be on another layer, you can actually draw a, a, a shape, but it's basically not going to be, uh, it's not going to be a, a copper zone. It's just going to be a shape. So maybe you want to do a, a eco zone, or if you wanted to do, you know, have something in your drawing, you could do all of that stuff. Basically, this is a, a generic tool you can use in order to make arbitrary shapes now and arbitrary polygons in your design. Uh, otherwise, though, uh, like I said, B, uh, B to draw. So if, if I hit right now, because there's nothing in here, there's nothing in the uh, top side layer that actually is a ground, uh, a ground plane or uh, has the net ground, right? So if we right click, or sorry, hit mouse over, hit E, you see that it is selected to ground. There's nothing actually there, so nothing will draw when I hit the B button. So you see it's filling in zones. If I hit that again, nothing actually fills in. I'd have to actually grab a component that had a ground. So if I duplicate this component and put the ground, flip it here, put the ground in there. Oops, move. There we go. So now the ground is inside that square. We should actually draw. See, now it actually draws the plane around it. And so that's important to know is that if you're if you're trying to draw a plane and you're not actually filling in, it's probably because there isn't actually that net existing on a pin somewhere. And that's something that we definitely go over more uh, as we make designs in KiCad. So uh, if you want to discuss this, you can go and discuss it over at the KiCad forum. That's forum.kiCad.info. Contextual Electronics is a program where we teach you how to do more layouts like the ones you're seeing here. Some simple and some very complicated like the ones we're showing. Uh, we are a program that basically, you know, basically it's a, you join in and you follow along and it's an apprenticeship to, to, build, uh, to build the stuff that we're building, but then hopefully that you can go and build your own stuff as well. So if you have any other questions, you can ask over at the KiCad forum and there's also a Contextual Electronics forum that's open and free to all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.